It's many a year since Ascot opened in such a blaze of perfect glory as on this halcyon June day. It was as though nature had set out to give the Queen a royal send-off on her Canadian visit. The sun cried out for exquisite fashions and was nobly answered. Good luck surely would reward the deserving. My hat. What a day it would be if the Ascot Stakes were won by the Queen's Horse Agreement, second favourite, and carrying the fervent hopes of at least three royal ladies. But the favourite was Sandy Acre. The little men with big responsibilities were ready, and Her Majesty wished good luck to her own jockey, Harry Carr. All racing needs a spice of luck, few events more so than the testing Ascot Stakes. The lucky owner, royal or otherwise, who would it be? There was still time to place bets, the agonising selection still to be made by the uncertain few. But now the 21 runners were away, two miles, four furlongs to go. Good old Prince Monolulu had no doubt made up his mind as the outsider El Hassa led the field from the equally unlikely British commander on the early stages of the first circuit. If they were ever to be seen in front, it was now or never. Eventually, form sorted things out and rounding the bend into the finishing straight, Jay Lindley had the favourite Sandy Acre in front. Now came a challenge to San Diego from Ireland in the shape of York Fair with Ocarias close behind. It promised to be a tremendous finish. San Diego began to fade. York Fair kept going, went to the front and began to look very much like a winner. But now came another challenge. Coming like the wind on the outside was Mr. H.J. Jones Rugosa, turning the optimism of Ted Leader's stable into hard fact. Rugosa showed his heels to York Fair. It was bound to be his race. Yes, Rugosa wins from York Fair and Ocarias. The gallant horse was led in. E. Smith rode a clever race with Rugosa, a worthy winner of the Ascot Stakes.